Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss the concept of firewall virtual system or simply speaking, the concept of virtual firewalls. Normally what we do is that we deploy the firewalls in the form of a hardware or in the form of a dedicated firewall system within our network. However, there is a possibility that we divide or we partition one physical firewall into multiple virtual firewalls and each of these virtual firewalls then act as a completely independent firewall which has got its own space, which has got its own dedicated interfaces, it can apply its own policies which will have its own routing table. So all the components that make up a physical firewall will actually be available in the virtual firewall as well. So we are going to look at the virtualization of the physical firewall or we can say that we are going to look at the firewall virtualization technology. So this module is actually going to be discussing the firewall virtualization technology that is available on Huawei's USG firewalls. So we are going to create one physical firewall or we are going to partition one physical firewall into multiple logical firewalls. The purpose or the reason why we would do this, the We'll discuss the virtual system over, get the virtual system overview, look at its basic technical principles, then look at the case studies for configuration and deployment, and finally we'll take a look at the troubleshooting. First off, the overview of virtual systems or the virtual si firewall system. As I said earlier, a virtual firewall system is a logical device or logical devices that we create on a physical device. The purpose of creating these logical firewalls is or the benefits or the features that we get is that we have independent management for each of those virtual firewalls which have been partitioned or created out of the physical firewall. All of them are going to have independent entity entries that is the routing table entry or the, or the session entries or the policies that we configure they will all be separate from each other. They will have dedicated resources for themselves and the traffic will be isolated between those firewalls which means that the traffic that is going through one virtual firewall will not have any impact or will have nothing to do with the traffic that is going through the second firewall. For this what we create is as is can be seen in the, in the picture that this is our physical firewall we have divided this physical firewall into multiple virtual or logical firewalls so we call this vsys1 or virtual system 1, virtual system 2 and virtual system 3 or vsys3. Each of these virtual systems or each of these virtual firewalls are going to have their own zones, they are going to have their own routing tables, they are going to have their own session tables maintained. So everything that is available on a physical firewall will also be available on these logical or on these virtual firewalls and as you can see they will have their own interfaces which will be dedicated for these virtual firewalls or will be part of these virtual firewalls. So each of these virtual firewalls will act as a separate logical firewall and it will behave and act exactly the same way as a physical firewall does. Why would we need this? The, the applications of a virtual firewall are simple and obvious and they, there can be multiple applications. We'll just look at a couple of very important applications. One application could be that we have this big physical firewall, this box, let's suppose this is a physical firewall and in this physical firewall we are creating multiple logical firewalls or virtual firewalls vs vsys a, vsys b and vsys c and each of these logical firewalls have been created in order to serve one of the departments of our organization. Our organization has got for example here three separate departments, one is R&D department, the other one is financial department and then we have the administration department and for each of these departments we have separate firewalls configured within the same physical firewall and each of these firewalls, these logical firewalls can be managed by the system or the security administrators of these particular departments. So in large enterprise, large size enterprise environments, each department could have their own security administrator and those security administrators could be managing their own virtual or their own logical firewalls. So all of these firewalls are called the virtual systems and the default firewall that is called the public system which means that if we do not create any virtual systems on the firewall there is only one system or one logical firewall running on the physical firewall and we call it the public firewall or the public system and if we create 
other virtual systems, then all of those systems are called VSYS, A, B, C, or whatever name we want to give them. They'll be called the virtual systems, and there will be one public system which is going to be the default system, which is created at the time when we are we have no virtual system. So even after after we create the virtual system, that physical or that public system will always be there. So we can say that there are two types of firewalls within a physical firewall, two types of logical firewalls that are created within a firewall. One is the public firewall or the public system, which is the default system, and then the rest are the virtual systems, and you can create multiple virtual systems. The second situation or the second scenario where we can have uh, implement the virtual firewalling, that is in a cloud computing environment or in a multi-tenancy environment, where we have one big firewall and we want to have this firewall to serve different customers. So if we have enterprise A or customer A and we also have another customer, customer B or enterprise B and we want them to use the same physical firewall. However, since it's a cloud computing environment or multi-tenancy environment in our data center, we want to have them work on their dedicated logical firewall. So we will partition this physical firewall into separate logical firewalls and we will assign one logical firewall to one customer and the other logical firewall to the other customer and both these customers will have their security or network administrators manage these firewalls independently without having to look at any other administrator or without having to interfere with each other. So the administrators from this customer will be looking at their own firewall and the administrators from this customer will be looking at and managing and configuring their own firewall. So this is how we segregate the firewalls based on customer requirements or based on different application scenarios. So this was the basic concept of firewall virtual systems or virtual firewall systems and their case studies or the specific scenarios where we can implement these firewalls. In the next uh, videos, on the next few videos, we are going to look at the basic technical principles or the functionality of these virtual firewalls. So let's move on to the next videos.